it explains what the truth is there and it says that there's downside that you're more limited when you can use it booting will always work for any clfs build but the truth method can only be used when you're building on the same architecture or well, not doing that for example if you're building on n4 and x86 system you can simply truth it's not that simple because we're building for an x86 64 system and it does say booting is required when you're compiling for a different architecture such as building a power pc system from an x86 the rule of thumb here is that if the architectures match and you're running the same series of kernel, specifically a 2.632 or newer Linux kernel, then you can just troot. If you aren't running the same series kernel or wanting to run different ABI, you'll need to use the boot option. So, um, well, I didn't realize about that kernel version. So the version we had, which was 2.6.2.5, wouldn't have been good enough anyway, by the looks of it, to build this. Um, but the key thing in our case, because we have got a newer kernel, because it's 3.14 we've built and installed, um, is that if you want to run a different ABI, the application binary interface, and that's what's different. We've got a 32-bit system and we've built a 64-bit um, uh, new system, if you like. So it does say if you're any doubts about this, um, you can run both these commands, and if either of these fail, you're going to have to use the boot method. Well, when I ran these before, they both failed, which gives you a good indication um, that, you know, it is the ABI that's wrong. And you can see they both fail. So we are going to have to boot, um, which is a lot more work. If I quickly open the truth chapter, you can see just, just if, it's a bit like the... Uh, Linux from scratch at the end of the temporary system you just create a few directories and some sim links change ownership and mount some virtual file systems and enter truth and then carry on building the system from there so it's quite simple unfortunately what we're going to do is a uh, quite a bit more complicated which we're going to go into the boot and as you can see we've got to build a few more packages because what we're essentially doing we're converting the temporary system into a mini clfs a mini LFS system, if you like. So if you imagine the temporary temporary tool system in a, a Linux from scratch, we're making that bootable, and that we're then going to boot into that environment to build the, the final system. Whereas normally the temporary um, Linux from scratch system is truted into and then built from there. Um, and it's so minimal, in fact, that there's not even any networking, which is a problem that I had to resolve um, to be able to carry on with the build, but it does give some hints as to how to get around building the remaining packages. So let's get on and start building these before we actually get into booting into this temporary um, Linux environment. So as it says, it shows you how to complete a build of temporary tools to create a minimal system that used to boot the target machine. And like I say, it is quite minimal. So BC, so obviously you need BC to build the kernel, which is what, what we've seen already. And that's why it's being built here, because we need to build a kernel that is capable of booting into the new system. And it won't be the same as the one we're currently running, because we need a 64-bit kernel. So we'll have to build a new one from scratch. So BC, and again, all these programs we're compiling now are going to be 64-bit because that's the environment we're going to be running when we boot. We're going to be booting to the 64-bit environment. Uh, oops. Make install. So some boot scripts. Yeah, I remember when I came to install the boot scripts for the final system, I got a bit confused while there was a patch there and it wasn't used. Uh, and as you can see from the name, it is only for the tools um, part, which is the bit we're in. So I assume it just changes some path names in that patch. In fact, let's have a quick look at it.
yeah, you can see that one there. It's inserting tools in front of the ETC. And there as well. And there. So, yeah, that's all it's about. That's why the patch is not used uh, later on. So, let's install these boot scripts. And we create a sysconfig clock script. Or configuration, rather. So E2FS prog. So yeah, unfortunately, this is the one that could have used the XT4. Um, I guess we could have built it initially when we built XZ and so on, but it's not that big a deal anyway, so not too concerned. Okay, that's done. So K-Mod, so technically I don't need this because I haven't got any separate modules for inserting into the kernel. But it's probably best to build it and install it just in case I need to reconfigure the kernel and use modules. So at least the capability will be there to insert them. done so shadow next so some changes configure the build Now this command here, there's actually a typo in it, um, and it will fail, the build will fail if you don't correct it. And what it is, that U shouldn't exist, it shouldn't say sub UIDs, it should say sub IDS. So that's quite important. So as I said, this is a system we're going to be booting that we're building here. So we need uh, an init that can take control from the kernel. So we install sysv init. See our system's being built in the tool directory, and because that's where the init tab is going. The following commands add to standard virtual terminals. If your system only has a serial console, skip. So, yeah, we do want some virtual terminals that'd be useful. Uh, we're not just running on a serial console, so we'll skip that and we'll just add this for neatness at the end. So, EU dev next.
install that, create a directory for storing firmware and create a dummy rule so that the EU dev will, will name Ethernet devices properly for the system. So I don't know if that's related to the problem that like I've had with this PC, although it, it was a direct copy apart from the kernel. Um, and the Pentium 4 didn't have that problem, but it could be kernel related. Right, so here a temporary cross compiled kernel will be built when configuring it, so that the minimal amount of options required. Um, I didn't tend to adhere to that, I just sort of set it as normal. Um, I can't even remember if I had sound or printers aren't needed. Um, it does say try avoid the use of modules if possible and don't use the resulting kernel for, for production systems. Um, so all I did was just use the copy of the kernel that I'm running, but obviously it gets adjusted because it's a 64-bit build. So it also says to ensure your system boots and you can properly run both 32-bit and 64-bit binaries. Please make sure that you enable support for ELF and emulations for 32-bit ELF into the kernel. So I'll have to double check that. So that's patched. Let's clean the directory. Looks like it's clean already. So I'm now going to do zcat proc config into dot config. Now I'm going to run um, this command here with make old config. And in fact, I'm going to do a yes double quote to accept the defaults. Uh, no, I don't need to do this now, do I? No, I'm not updating it actually. Oh yes, it is going to ask me questions, right? Okay, so I'm just going to do yes. Uh, what this will do is emulate me typing enter to each of the questions, just accepting the defaults. Okay, so that's done. So now I can go into the menuing system, and this make arch equals x eight six sixty four forces the sixty four bit kernel. So if I go into general setup first. Let's just check things here. Didn't like there's much change there at all. Right, yes, it does look like it's using 64 bit. I can't remember where that was now. I thought it was under general setup. Oh, it does actually say x8664 there, so that's all right. We are in a 64-bit mode, so that's good. Um, so let's just check everything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the correct setting. It's not an Athlon. It's not the older P4, which is what I came from. It is a Core 2. It's not an Atom, and we don't want that one, so that's fine. Yeah, seems to have retained all the settings that I was using before, so that's okay. Um, I think this has got speed step, but it says that's oh, enhanced speed step deprecated. Right, let's disable that. Peace states driver. Don't need that one. Right, okay, so that looks like all I need there for managing the CPU, so that's fine. 
Whitling. That server chipset is okay. does recommend to set that up so I'll turn that on excuse right so um, elf binaries IA32 emulation that looks like what we might need to set up include code to run legacy 32 bits under a 64 bit kernel you should like this turn this on unless you're 100% sure you don't have any 32 bit programs left Pure 64, okay. So let's turn that on. Right, I think we'll need that. I'm not sure if we need that because we haven't got any older utilities. That I'm aware of, so I'll leave that. Uh, networking device drivers. So yeah, these have all been remembered, so that's fine. Network device. Yeah, we've still got Intel. that I'm not sure if there's I2C on this I did have a uh, SPCI booted into a live CG just, just to get a SPCI output let me just check that uh, I01 okay so it needs that and the LPC okay what about bus support yeah that's the one ICH device drivers, multifunction drivers, right? Set that, that would be useful. Multifunction ICH LCP uh, LPC, sorry. LPC. Okay, so it's probably not essential, but it's there. AHCI, we've got, got that one. PCIe, we've got. Sounds not too bothered with. 
got the network driver so maybe just the video to set sure if I need that or not. I'm going to leave it as it is. I'll leave the visa up at the moment, which is a sensible default. There might be something I need to sort out for the final version. Um, but apart from that, I think, yeah, sound's not set, so I'm not particularly bothered by that. I think everything else is the same. Yep, all looks good. Um, I don't think I need that, so I'll get rid of that. Okay, so now I can compile the kernel.
Okay, that's built. Now, I just remembered something um, I found out. This kernel wouldn't boot um, when I first built it, and it was because I missed the setting. Now, this setting does get mentioned at the end when the final kernel is built for the final system. Um, so I'm just going to check it now in uh, the yeah, generic driver options. Yeah, this one here, maintain... Um, dev temp fs. Um, I'm not sure if the auto mount one's needed or not. But I'll check it anyway. So I'll have to set that and rebuild. But hopefully, it should only rebuild the parts of the kernel that that pertains to. So it shouldn't be too long. Yeah, it looks like it's. Uh, Completing everything, not not rebuilding everything. The looks of it. Okay, that seemed to rebuild the whole lot. It did look like it wasn't going to rebuild the whole lot, but anyway, let's now install the modules, which we haven't got any, so this will fail, which is not a problem. And install any firmware, which again, I'm not sure if we... Oh, it is going to install something. I'm not sure if we use that anyway, but it's there. Um, now it says to issue the following commands to install the kernel. So 
we need to put these into tools boot. Okay, that's fine. So this new kernel we've got for the temporary system is in the tools boot directory, not in the normal boot partition. So we need to bear that in mind. Next we've got grub. I'm not going to install that. The reason being it'll be compiled for 64 bit and it means the um, older um, versions of Linux from scratch won't be able to boot um, if I put this image on an older machine um, i.e. a 32-bit only machine so I'm not going to do that at all so now it says the remainder of the book should be run as a root user check that CLFS is set in the root users environment for proceed proceeding so I'm going to keep that Linux directory there for the time being I'm not going to delete it in case I find that I need to adjust something about the kernel if something doesn't work I need to rebuild it and I'm back at root. Let's check the CLFS is set. It is, as we'd expect. Now we can create some structure, directory structures. And some essential symlinks. To enable C++ tests in glibc and bin utils test suites to link, create a directory, make some symbolic links. So we'll run tests for the tool chain. Um, I did run the test for the other tools, but I won't be bothering that on this video. Populating dev. Creating the password. group and login files now we create an etc fs tab for this new cfs partition and let's edit that and put some sensible values into it so our root partition is for the new system is SDA 10. What have I done there? SDA 10 and it's an EXT3. Um, we've got a swap partition at SDA 3. And I'm not going to put the boot partition yet because we won't be using that for the time being. That'll be something I'll do when we're dealing with the final system, um, configuring that. Because um, if you remember, we've just installed the kernel into the tool subdirectory within um, our, our new partition. So that should be okay. Setting up the environment. So this is the environment for the new route. I'm going to add in make flags there before I forget. So make flags equals minus J two. Uh, that should be export, shouldn't it? And that, so I'll just check that looks sane. Yep, that looks okay. Build flags, we need to copy our build variables into our new system. So let's check they've gone in there. Export build 64. All oh, right, that's empty. That's interesting. Uh, 
I'm not sure if that is supposed to be empty or not. Build variables. Uh, so this is why we're in CLFS. Build sixty four. Was set to minus M sixty four. And this was when we were a CLFS user, wasn't it? And this otherwise all oh, everything should be done as a CLFS user, yeah. So I think that's probably a little bit of a, an error there because it's not set for the route. It never was. Um, I didn't notice this when I was doing the initial build and obviously didn't seem to ha uh, make any problem or have any problem. But if there are problems, it shouldn't do because we're in a 64-bit environment. We've got 64-bit tools. Um, there's no real reason to set that. I guess um, I'm not sure whether I should set it or not, but I'll leave it as it is, as everything seemed to work before. So changing ownership now. So that's the tools directory is all owned by root and now the cross tools. Now we've got a problem that when we boot into the system, as I said previously, it's very minimal. There's not even any networking. So, um, what I plan to do is to build half of the final system at the terminal. So it'll be roughly, um, it will be up to there because when we've built IP route, we've got tools to activate the network and I'll also install um, OpenSSL and OpenSSH to allow me to get in, um, albeit I'll be setting things up manually but it'll allow me to get in from this screen again um, and do the remainder of the build, the last half um, from this terminal, which is a lot easier uh, to do. And to get around that, what they do is they suggest that you um, convert the HTML book into a text file. Well, I haven't got the book as one chunk. I've got individual chapters, so... I'll have to um, convert each um, HTML file um, as they are in each chapter, but it's not too much of a problem. Um, I'll also need um, GPM to allow me to the general purpose mouse daemon, uh, which will allow me to copy and paste from a virtual terminal. So... I need to get hold of that and build that now. Um, I've got the CLFS host still set. No, I haven't. So what I need to do is temporarily become CLFS Um, and install this so it's become CLFS echo maybe I should have done this a little bit earlier actually oh there's that build 64 um, what was it echo CLFS host 
Yep, and target is obviously set to something. Yep, they're okay. So I'm going to um, fetch. All right, that's not there. Uh, let's come back out. Going to CLFS. Right, I didn't actually fetch that. Let's get this GPM. Um, is it here? Where did I get it from? Oh, BLFS, that was it. Yeah, so I need to download this. save that and I'll also need to get hold of the book um, Yeah, well, I need to get a hold of this bit here. Uh, now, I should have prepared this. Let's see if we can actually do this. We've got wget. Yeah. Um, so, let's go back in there. And it was this one here that says 64... Dash 64, this is the target of 64 bits for the x86 architecture and the pure 64 as opposed to the multi liberal 32 bit. So, this is the file that I needed to get hold of. Um, arguably, this doesn't really belong here. Let's move it into sources. Um, in fact, let's create uh, CLFS slash sources slash book and then move um, this file just downloaded into CLFS sources book. And then change into that, that will be better. Right, and then extract that. And this will be just the part of the book that I'm viewing. Uh, XVF CLFS. See, it's the x 6464 And yep, yeah, there's all the uh, files that constitute this part of the book. So what I need to do is to um, convert all of them and um, also I need to install GPM. So let's do GPM first of all. Um, so let's go back and make a BLFS directory as I've taken this from BLFS um, where did I download that yep GPM there it is Okay, so let's get this installed first of all. So I need to change this to um, CFS user, why not? Oh, come 
not too far. All right, let's go back in. Change to root. Change to CLFS. Now go into the sources BLFS. Extract it. Right, and then I need to do auto gen. I've just pulled these commands off of BLFS. And then configure prefix equals four slash tools. So we're building 64 bit version of this. Sysconf the equals slash tool slash etc build equals dollar open curly bracket clfs underscore host and host equals dollar open curly bracket clfs underscore target Right, yeah, now I had this problem, it's a bit strange. Um, that installed at SH is in the root directory, but it's not in the config uh, directory where it's expecting it. So all I did was I copied that into the config and that seemed to fix the configure. So I'm not sure why that's happened but it does seem to fix things. Then I'll build that. And then because I haven't got right access to um, tools anymore, uh, LD, you see it's owned by root. Uh, there, yeah, it's owned by root. Um, what I'm going to do is just to do su minus c make install, put the roots password in, and that's done. So if I now look at tools slash bin, is it in slash gpm? Uh, not sure if that's the one I want. Let's try user in GPM. No. Let's see what it installed. Come on, not found. That's interesting. building that part there. Yeah, make install. Don't know what that's about. Oh, S bin it's in, right, okay. GPM, GPM, there it is. I can't execute it because it's a 64 bit. So I can't test it or run, but you can see it's a 64 bit version. So, but at least it's there. So um, I'll be able to run it in the new environment. Um, so yeah, what I need to do now is to well, let's tidy that up. Don't need that anymore. And go back to the book. Change into the directory. And I need to go to Test Suite Tools. And each of these HTML files I need to convert to a text file. So what I can do is do for um, a in star dot html do uh, file name equals dollar 
and bracket base name dollar curly bracket a close curly bracket space dot html so that gets the actual base name of the file name uh, for each file in this directory without the .html part and then use links to uh, convert that file into the file name, same file name with a .txt on the end and that's done. So now if I look at the directory you can see there's an equivalent text file for each one of those HTML files. And if, for example, we view that one, you can see it's just a straightforward text file. And it's just the contents. If we look at one that's might be a bit more useful to look at, for example, that one. Again, it's the just the plain text, but you can see it's got the commands in there, which is the most important thing that I'll be able to copy and paste with GPM. And now that's done. I've got to do the same to the final system directory. So there's quite a few in here. So I'll just recall that command, that one there, and it's processed them all. You can see there's a text file for each HTML file. So what I've done, I've converted all the files for chapter nine, which is the the test suite tools and chapter 10 which is system software so all that has been converted but as I say by the time I get to IP tools is it yeah IP utils I'm hoping to be able to get the network up and running uh, not IP utils sorry IP route I'll be able to get the network running and I'll be able to um, SSH in from this screen again and just finish off um, the compilation from there remotely Right, one last thing I've got to do before I finish here and reboot into the new system is to configure Grub so that it will actually um, find that new kernel we've got and use that to boot and um, ensure that the uh, correct system is booted. So we need to mount um, CLFS at the moment, so let's come out of that. Mount boot, change into it, into grub, and edit the menu dot list. So you can see we've already got our current running kernel. I'm going to um, add in a copy of that and change it to um, LFS. So this will be CLFS now. CLFS 3.0.0, but it'll be the temporary, um, what do they call it? Yeah, temporary system. So I'll just call temp system. And I need to change this to uh, nine because we're gonna the um, kernel we're gonna load is the one that's on the partition um, that we're using to build CLFS 3.0.0 on. So the partition is SDA 10, which with index zero becomes nine for Grub. And the kernel we want to load is in. On that partition, it's in tools, boot, and it's called vmliners 3.14.21. The root is dev sda10, and I think I can leave that as ro. I'll find out if it doesn't like that at all. And I think that's all I need to do. So I'll save that and basically tidy up here. So I'm at the root, so 
change directory to there, you mount CLFS. Uh, unmount boot and I'll shut this down and then the next time you see this um, I'll be sitting at the terminal and we'll carry on the build from there.